Hey everybody, welcome to One Flight Down Basement Beer Tastings. Today, we're looking at two classic Canadian beers that rumor has it are not going to be around much longer. They're being discontinued. I haven't seen any like official word from uh, Molson who, who puts out these beers. I, but I have seen two different uh, bars in our city uh, post about it on Facebook. And yeah, people are... People are a little uh, worried that these beers are going to be gone. The beers in question are Ovi, Old Vienna. It's a premium quality beer, 5% alcohol. Uh, this is a good chance this is the first beer I ever sipped. Because um, this is what my dad usually had in the house uh, growing up. He had a lot of OV. I actually remember um, a cousin of mine coming to visit uh, from Scotland in uh, like when we were about 19 years old. And this is what my dad had in the house. And, um, you know, we drank OVs all night the night he arrived. Next night or a couple nights later, whatever, we went out... Uh, to one of the local bars and he goes oh rounds on me I'll, I'll get this and he goes up to the bar and he orders two ovs because that's all he knew of canadian beer is uh, can i get two ovs and the guy looked at him like he was nuts but uh, yeah we were pretty cool oh there we are yeah two of the coolest looking 19 year olds you ever seen eh? yeah all right uh, <laughs> dorks uh so the thing with ov uh yeah so it is brewed uh it has been brewed recently by Molson. It was uh, originally from Carling O'Keefe, which is a big brewery in Canada years ago. Um, and I think they were bought out by Molson in the late 80s, and that's how this became a Molson's product. Um, it was, I took some notes. Uh, it was originally brewed by the Koch Beverage and Ice Company uh, out of Ohio. So its original roots actually aren't uh, Canadian, interestingly enough. Uh, and the other one that we're doing today is Standard Lager. And this being discontinued is really upsetting for a lot of people I know. So Standard um, was brewed, it has its origins in Manitoba. Uh, it's a regional beer that you can't get really throughout the rest of, uh, of Canada. All right, so, so Standard actually dates back to 1877. It was originally called, uh, check my notes here, uh, Drury's Standard Lager. Uh, and was brewed at the Redwood Brewery in Winnipeg, which I think actually eventually, like when I was a kid, I think it was a, I remember going past it all the time, and it was a, a Molson brewery at that time. And that was torn down in the late 90s. So in 1940, the product was sold to the uh, Great Western Brewing Company in Saskatchewan, which eventually uh, became Molson, Molson Coors, and that's where we are today. Um, so it's a very popular regional beer, uh, big with hipsters. <laughs> hipsters and people who just don't want to be bothered you know trying new craft beers and stuff but uh, yeah it's uh, a classic beer uh from my memory i like this more than this uh but i haven't had either of them in a while and what i'm going to do today i'm actually going to be doing a taste testing flight i've got uh both beers here and two other um local lagers uh that maybe they would make a good substitute for someone um as we go along, I could see whatever is in number three here has almost no head. Uh, so that's interesting. So my lovely partner, Catherine, had poured these out for me. Uh, they're all numbered one to four. I don't know which one is which. So maybe I'm going to like love the OV and go, oh my God, I can't believe to get rid of this. Maybe I'm going to love one of the newer products and think, well, oh, who needs OV in standard when you have this? Uh, so for the record, the other beers that we're going to be trying... One is from Half Pints Brewing. Uh, it's called Double Standards, I think in tribute to Standard Lager, I'm gonna guess. And the other one is Astra Premium Lager, and that is from the good folks at Oxus Brewing. Um, these I've tried fairly recently, and, and from what I remember, they're both pretty decent lagers. So uh, let's go. Oh wait, hold on. If we're doing this big special episode, we need party lights. Pretty exciting, huh? So let's get ready and go. I have no idea uh, which one is which. Let's see how this goes. 
number one. It's actually quite crisp on the nose. Yeah, it could be pretty decent. Let's try this one out. It's got a bit of a, a, a maltier uh, note to it. Um, a little bit of a lingering aftertaste, but nothing overpowering. Um, and thankfully, these are all nice and cold, as a good Canadian lager should be. All right, we'll uh, move on to number two. I was just a palate cleanse. It's not just me eating chips on camera. All right, uh, let's move on to number two here. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a flight of four loggers before, but uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do for science, right? Yeah, this one's much lighter on the nose. I'm uh, getting similar characteristics to the last one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's much lighter. So uh, let's give this one a try. Yeah, not as malty as the first one. The body on this is quite a bit different too. It's feeling a little more of like a, um, feels a little bubblier, I guess. Um, it's not bad actually. A little sweeter than the first one. Um, yeah, I think I could see my, I, I mean, they're, they're both fine beers, but I feel like this would really go down nicely on, on the like hot summer day kind of a thing. Yeah, that's that's quite good. Um, all right, next up. So one has like zero head on it. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, you look at it, it look almost looks more like a cider than a beer with you know the the lack of head. Um, pretty odorless, really. I mean, it's slightly, a little bit of a metallic note in the nose, but that that's really about it. Like, I'm getting more, more from the can than the actual beer on this one. Um, but maybe it tastes better than it looks. Let's, let's give it a try. So actually, quite, these are, I, I'm surprised how different all of these are. Um, this one has a heavier body. Uh, than the other two. Um, it's a little more of a, a, a bready note than, than those as well. This one has a little more like, like uh, um, it's got a livelier first sip to it. It kind of falls a little flat at the end. Um, I don't know, it's just because there's like no head on it. It makes me feel like it would be flat. But the, the initial sip actually is, is quite good and it feels pretty good at the uh, tip of the tongue. And then it just kind of like a really flat finish but if, you, if you're looking for something with little to no aftertaste i mean this this is falls into that quite well all right and now we're going with the fourth one um this one clearly had well had i guess uh the most head on it when it was first poured um very very clear looking i mean they're all quite clear looking it's got a thicker mouthfeel um yeah if i had to guess i would say this is maybe the ov um it's because it's just like it feels a little heavier and, and yeah not as not as bright as a couple of the other ones were um i mean i could be totally wrong though we're gonna find out in a minute or two so yeah, i'm gonna give them all another try though before kind of unveiling them but so far, I really feel like this was the best. The, the second one was probably the brightest and best of them all. But um, they're all pretty decent. I would I would drink any of them. My show pretty much focuses on craft beer. A lot of what I drink is, is craft beer these days. Um, I don't go for the classic Canadian stuff as much as I used to. But, I mean, it, they're still solid beers for the most part. I mean, I always kind of thought, like, like, everyone always had their favorites. And I was kind of, they all taste pretty similar, right? Like, like I remember people being like, oh, I love club and I, I hated club. And I realized the only reason I hated it was because I just associated it with like a really lame party I went to that everyone drank club. And I just thought, I'm never drinking that stuff again. I am getting a difference in these. Like they don't all taste identical, which is 
interesting and exciting for me and I'm gonna go and give them all another try. So when Catherine put this together, on the opposite side of this sheet she has uh, numbered, uh, told you know, put down which one is which uh, and also added her own notes so we'll check those out at the end as well. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take a few quick notes. Yeah, number one I'm gonna say is just it's it's really the it's the heaviest aftertaste of any of them. So the aftertaste on this still seems very strong to me. Um, like it's not bad. I mean, I I could <laughs> picture myself sitting in the Legion and enjoying this, um, but it's yeah, it's just but it's it's nothing exciting, right? It's just kind of a heavy thud at the end of the beer. So uh, that's number one. Uh, all right, number two, number two. Here we go. Uh, it's a little brighter, not too heavy on the aftertaste. And, and what does is kind of linger as an aftertaste is quite nice. It's a little, it tingles a little bit more. So, uh, so I'm going to say tingly, uh, tingly and bright is how I want to describe that one. Here we go. Uh, number three again. Definitely brighter up front, a little heavier and, and falls a bit flat at the end. So take my notes on that. And number four, one more time, back to number four, uh, which I think was the one I was uh, predicting was OV. Um, again, I could be totally off with that. Sorry, the uh, recording stopped there right as I, I sit that, so I'm going to take another one. But look, look at the legs on that, right? Like that's, that really, that looks like the end of the night in a bar, right? Anyway, uh, here we go. Number four. It's weird I'm getting a, like a bit of a bubblegum note this time around. Um... Yeah, that's interesting. If I'm at the Jets game and I get like the, the big macro beer, you know, like way overpriced uh, Bud Light or Coors Light or whatever it is, I, I sometimes find a bit of a bubblegum kind of quality to it. I'm, I'm getting a bit of that with this. Uh, before we go any further, I'm going to rank these. Um, I think that uh, my favorite overall w was number two, which I said was uh, tingly and bright. Um... I guess a little dicey after that. Like that's the old, that was like kind of my my clear winner of all of them. I would then go with number four. My second choice would be number four. My third choice would be number one, and uh, number three would be my fourth choice. All right, so uh, let's unveil them. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, my lovely partner Catherine had written down uh, right here which ones they are. So we're going to check that out right now. So number one, so number one, this is the one that I said had a heavy thud at the end, uh, is Astra. A little surprised by that. So Astra is put out by Oxus Brewing, uh, who I did an episode very recently on and almost everything I've had from them, I've really, really liked. And they kind of branched out recently to do sort of a, just a, a premium lager, um, that you can get for a really decent price because I mean the craft beer stuff is pretty expensive and, and you can actually get the Astra quite cheap where I am um, but yeah I I put down here that it uh, had a heavy thud at the end and yeah I mean it wasn't the greatest beer in the world it's not terrible I would buy it again um, but it's not my favorite of the ones that are here so all right so number two I said was uh tingly and bright. I rank this as my favorite of the four of them. So let's see what this was. Uh, this was the standard lager. Um, and, and people I know who like standard love standard. Like, like people are very upset that uh, this beer is being discontinued. And given how much I enjoyed this of the four of them, I'm, I'm kind of on board with that. This is, uh, it's quite a nice beer. Um, yeah, I, uh, hashtag save standard. I don't know if that's uh, going to do anything or not, but let's, uh, all we can do is try, folks. All we can do is try. So number three, I said had a nice bright start, um, a little bit of a heavier body and fell a bit flat at the end. So number three was the double standard. And this is also the one that had no head to it, which is interesting. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think it's that close to uh, the standard, which I think, I think it's in tribute to. Uh, Half pints is one of one of the first like 
independent craft brewers that we've had in in Manitoba and uh, they've done some great stuff I really like a lot of their beers uh, but yeah I'm mean, getting a, a, a basic lager from a craft brewery yeah it's still a basic lager so not my favorite but it was okay so I guess that means number four which I found apparently I think that was more, though, because of my recording failure. Uh, so number four, I think, would have to be OV. It sure is. Uh, and the OV, of course, I said had a bit of a bubblegum flavor. So uh, how, did, how did Catherine's rankings go? She also said the sta double standard had no head. She made a point of that. Uh, so that's that was when she poured it. And I'd say there was like a, I don't know, like three minute difference between when she poured these and when I started doing the show. So, uh, yeah, like fresh out of the can, that double standard had no head. So that's something to keep note of. She put her rankings, uh, I'm gonna do it as a little countdown. At number four, she had the Astra, which uh, I have number three. Uh, number three, she had the OV. Uh, number two was the Standard. And uh, number one was the double standard, which had no head, but she still really liked it. So for me, number four was the double standard. Oh, I put that one last, and she put it uh, as her favorite. That is interesting. Um, number three was the Astra. Number two was the OV. And number one was the standard logger. So our... our our tastes on those were, were, were completely different. We'll be fine, folks. We'll, we'll be okay. But I find it interesting that, that the, like my top two were the classics and not what the uh, craft brewers are doing. Uh, yeah, a little surprised by that. But uh, hey, that's, that's, that's why you do these blind taste tests. Uh, so yeah, the standard lager I put as number one. I think I'm going to jump on this hashtag save standard bandwagon because uh, this this was the clear winner for me. And so thanks for joining me on this little journey. Uh, stay safe, everybody. Drink local or drink, you know, regional, which is what uh, standard lager is, uh, is considered as a regional beer. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. We'll be doing another show in the near future. Cheers, everybody. Yeah.